In this part of the Neurocomputers and Deep Learning course related to biological and artificial neurons, we will cover characteristics of neural networks made of artificial neurons. Up to now, we considered only single neurons. In this part, we are going to consider network of neurons. While a single artificial neuron is not able to implement some Boolean functions, the problem is overcome by connecting the outputs of some neurons as input to the others, so constituting a neural network. Suppose that we have connected many artificial neurons to form a network. In such a case, there are several neurons in the system, so we assign indices to the neurons to discriminate between them. Then to express the activation or output of eight neurons, the formulas are modified as follows. The activation for neuron I is equal to J starting from 1 to N, the connection from J to R neuron I multiplied by the value of the output neuron J plus the threshold of R neuron. Where XJ may be either the output of a neuron determined as xj is equal to the output function of the j neuron applied on the activation of the j neuron. Or an external input determined as xj is equal to uj. Instead of a neuron output, we have an external input. Remember that this is the activation of the neuron I, which is given by this formula. In some applications, the threshold value theta I is determined by the external inputs. Due to the equation given above, sometimes it may be convenient to think all the inputs are connected to the network only through the threshold of some special neurons called the input neurons. They are just conveying the input value connected to their threshold as theta j is equal to uj to their output xj with a linear output transfer function fj for the neuron j applied on the activation is just equal to the activation of that neuron. So whatever the activation for the input neuron which is equal to the theta j is given as the output. For a neural network, we can define a state vector x in which the it component is the output of the it neuron, that is the output of neuron i. If we have n neurons in the neural network, then the size of the state vector will be equal to n. Furthermore, we define a weight matrix, capital W, in which the component WJI is the weight of the connection from neuron J to neuron I. Therefore, we can represent the system as the state vector is equal to the output function F applied on the weight matrix multiplied by the state vector plus theta. After calculating this value, we are applying the function f on each entry of the resulting vector. Here notice that w is a matrix multiplied by x is a vector plus theta. Theta is a vector here, the result is a vector. On that vector, we are applying the function output function f. That means that for each entry of the resultant vector, we are applying the function f. Here, theta is the vector whose i component is theta i. This is the threshold of the neuron i. And if f is used to denote the vector function such that the function f i is applied at the i component of the vector.
Here there's another example. This is a neural network. A simple example often given to illustrate the behavior of a neural network is the one used to implement the XOR, exclusive OR function. Notice that it is not possible to obtain exclusive OR equivalence function by using a single neuron. However, this function can be obtained when outputs of some neurons are connected as inputs to some other neurons. Such a function can be obtained in several ways, only two of them being shown in the following figure. This is one of the implementation for XOR function. This is another one. Also, there may be other implementation. Now let's consider the second neural network. It can be represented as, this is the neural network, and here try to represent it in the matrix vector notation. State is the vector for which each component is the output of the neurons in the neural network. Here we have input neurons and we have two more neurons. This is the state vector. And this is equal to, this is weight matrix, and each column is corresponding to the connection ways of each neuron. And then we have transpose, and it is multiplied by the state vector plus the threshold vector. In fact, the inputs are connected as theta values. For the input neurons 1 and 2, for which the output is x1 and x2, we have connections u1 and u2 connected as input. Here f1 and f2, the output functions for these two neurons, being linear identity function, and f3 and f4 being threshold functions. Or if this is a function vector, the first two components are linear identity functions and the last two components are threshold functions. In case of binary input, that is ui, u1 or u2, they are each either equal to 0 or 1. In the bipolar input, if we consider ui, either u1 or u2, it may take value minus 1 or plus 1. And all of fi may be chosen as threshold function. All the diagonal entries of the weight matrix are 0. Since the neurons do not have self-feedback in this example, there is no connection from a neuron to itself. The weight matrix is upper triangular. Notice that all the values here in the lower triangle is zero. Since the network is feedforward, so this is a feedforward network, and the weight connection matrix is upper triangular. Neural computing is an alternative to program computing, which is a mathematical model inspired by biological models. This computer system is made of a number of artificial neurons and a huge number of interconnections between them. According to the structure of the connections, we identify different classes of network architectures. This is a layered feedforward neural network. Later, we will call it multi-layer perceptron. And this is a non-layered recurrent neural network. In feedforward neural networks, the neurons are organized in the form of layers. The neurons in a layer get input from the previous layer and feed their output to the next layer. In this kind of networks, connections to the neurons in the same or previous layers are not permitted. The last layer of the neurons is called the output layer 
and the layers between the input and output layers are called the hidden layers. The input layer is made of special input neurons transmitting only the applied external input to their outputs. In a network, if there is only the layer of input nodes and a single layer of neurons constituting the output layer, then they are called single layer networks. If there are one or more hidden layers, such networks are called multi-layer networks. For a feed-forward network always exists an assignment of indices to the neurons resulting in a triangular weight matrix, indicating that there is no self-feedback on the neurons. The structures in which connections to the neurons of the same layer or to the previous layers are allowed are called recurrent networks. In recurrent networks, due to feedback, it is not possible to obtain a triangular weight matrix with any assignment of the indices.